Hello and welcome back to another Stranger Radios episode. On this episode we look at the realistic TRC-214. I have to start by saying that if this radio looks a little bit familiar to you, it might be because you have seen it more recently on the hit Netflix TV show Stranger Things. In seasons 1 and 2 this was the radio that the character Mike used primarily, but it was also used in the show by some of the other characters in different scenes. This radio is a big radio and indeed in the show it looked even larger in the hands of the kid actors. However, in reality, and I know Stranger Things certainly isn't reality, the show was supposed to be set in a period folks of my age would recognise and that was 1983. However, if we look at the Radio Shack catalogue from 1983, the TRC-214 doesn't actually appear until 1985. However, the makers of the show are already asking the viewer to suspend reality for 40 minutes anyway, so I'm sure that most didn't notice and or would really care about such a detail. I'm sure that American viewers of the show would be able to pick out many more inaccuracies, but I suppose it's poetic license. Now, unlike some of the other realistic radios, I don't believe that a UK FM variant of this AM radio ever made it over here. I could be wrong, but I haven't seen anything that suggests it did. The show also featured the TRC-206, which which I also intend to do a video on. The realistic TRC-214 was really an attempt by the company to make a middleman radio. Neither a small toy radio nor a multifunctional 40-channel radio, but something in between the two that wouldn't hold the super high price tag of a 40-channel set, but would offer a radio of similar size and relatively high power output, It would be a rugged radio and definitely not a toy. It would also offer three channels and an impressive three watts of power, more of that claim later. The TRC-214 also had another trick up its sleeve, and that was its conductive side panels. The side panels on the radio help provide a ground plane through the user's hands down to earth, which definitely does help the set out in the field. That being said, many of the promotional shots, and indeed the artwork on the box, amusingly featured the radio being operated by people with gloves on. The radio has a three-channel selector switch on the front, designated as A, B and C, with pairs of corresponding user-selectable at point of sale crystals inside the set. The radio also features an external antenna connector, an external power connector and an external charge connector to charge the 10 off 1.2 volt rechargeable batteries, which the user would have to buy separately. The unit would also operate from 8 off 1.5 volt disposable batteries as well, with the two remaining battery slots being taken up by the supplied dummy batteries, because of course putting in 10 1.5 volt batteries would overvolt the radio. Now, the front panel features a volume and a squelch knob and a battery test button with a light. The radio came equipped as standard with uh, with USAM channel 14 crystals factory fitted and they offered at a price any pairing of channels out of the other 39 channels at point of purchase. Now, the claimed power of this radio, according to the manual, cover art and the radio itself, relates to its power requirements rather than its power RF power output which is rather misleading and something you might think manufacturers would not get away with today. However, as we all know, uh, that's certainly at the budget end of the market now. This misdirection on power is still very much alive and well. Indeed, the RF power rating of the radio is actually more 1.5 watts with a 3 watt power consumption with a maximum current drain of 750 milliamps on transmit which could quite swiftly deprive you of your pocket money back in 1985 if you weren't using rechargeables. On the front panel of the radio there is also an LED modulation LED which flashes red when you speak and lights solid red at 100% modulation. The radio was used very commonly by construction companies and tradesmen at the time as it offered some great features for a reasonable price. It's probably unlikely that kids of that age of the Stranger Things characters would have actually been able to afford such a radio as the TRC-214 at the time because it was still a relatively expensive radio and it didn't come with batteries of any kind. In the show we also witnessed the characters using the radios often with the antenna either completely down or at half mast which would almost certainly have damaged the radios and or caused terrible performance However, I have always forgiven TV shows uh, as accommodating a meter, a long whip in a scene isn't really very practical. 
Many eBay sellers will list radios as Stranger Things radios, which just aren't, so be careful. Also, variants of the show of the radio shown in the show were sold in Canada, but were less powerful at half the power. So if you are a stickler for cosplay accuracy, then just watch what you're buying. The radios appear from time to time on eBay, sometimes in pairs. If you're in the UK and you want to, sh uh, to ship one from the States, prepare to pay between 50 and up to £100 for a good one. In a good box with the manual, you will pay a lot more though. Um, there is no doubt that the success of the show has pushed prices up of this radio and the 206. If you are looking uh, for the radios to use in any practical sense, check with the seller if they know what crystals are fitted, as some sellers take them out and sell them on their own, as they are sought after and are expensive to add at a later date. But what is of most importance is to ask the seller to show you a photo of the antenna fully extended, as getting a replacement antenna at a reasonable cost is very expensive. And of course, if you are not in the U US, please check if you can legally use these radios in your country of origin. If you are in the UK, you can le legally use these radios with no license, and I do know that some UK cosplayers do use them at meet and greet shows. I've always loved these large format walkie talkies ever since I was a little kid, so I am super pleased that other people also find them a really cool throwback to their childhoods, although in practice many of us at the time were very likely using much cheaper low quality sets. Radio Shack in the UK ceased trading in 1999, but the US store is still active, and whilst the radio ceased production in the 1980s, they do have some new realistic TRC merchandise available t-shirts and mobile phone cases. Sadly they don't ship these items to the UK directly, but if you have a friend or a relative in the US you can get a very cool shirt. In reality and as a practical radio these days, these sets are simply never going to appeal to anyone who has seen a modern handheld CB or PMR radio. They are however a great reminder of a time long long ago when technology was taking off so fast a vivid, colourful time of optimism and great hope, and I think that in combination with TV shows and a rose-tinted glow is the reason why people still like to hold on to a slice of the past. Modern PMR radios offer similar ranges in a cheap, tiny form factor with incredible battery life. There might well be people still using radios like this uh, day in, day out, but I'm sure that they would be born out of a love for the damn things rather than any other reason. It's just three screws and the lid of the radio pops off the back there with just a couple of interconnecting wires holding the lid to the main board for the battery power there. Um, so quite a compact design for the time. Uh, I was really pleased to see that my radio came with a full set of crystals there and appears from outward looks to be nice and clean and tidy with no screwdriver king uh, markings anywhere. In fact, it doesn't look like any of the settings or the controls have been fiddled with in any way, which is good. Um, so um, once I've got my other set, I'll do another video where we tune these guys up. And these are the uh, little um, battery spacers that I showed you there. Now, if you do buy one of these and they don't come with any, you can pick these up off of eBay should you need them. And uh, I shan't be running this for any length of time on these batteries, but just for a test. So let's turn it on and uh, see what this old radio sounds like. Test, testing one, two, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Testing the realistic TRC 214 on channel 9, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Right, this is the basic setup. We're taking the RF out of the radio via the phono jack into the power meter there. Then we're going through the power meter into an attenuator out of the attenuator and into the frequency counter. And I've got a note of the channels that we've got on there. So let's give it a try, see how we get on. Right, we're on channel A, which according to the listing should be 27.035 megahertz. We'll just check the power 
and I say no adjustments have been made on this radio so we're on the lower scale so it's doing just under a watt on normal batteries there so I'm sure we could bring that up a little bit uh, with a bit of tweaking and let's just see how well on frequency it is on the frequency counter so yeah just under a watt normal batteries straight lead from the phono uh, it's an odd connector isn't it I always think for you know, <laughs> for radio but anyway so we'll see what the frequency count when it finally settles down is going to show us 27.03522 there you go so it could probably do with coming down just a little bit but um, it's within spec right we're on channel B which according to my chart is channel 9 and we're still doing just under a watt and we're on 27.06515 and finally we're on the last channel which is channel 14 setting C which according to this should be 27.125 um, with this cheap frequency counter the gate time is fairly slow on it so um, you have to give it a little bit of time to settle but um, again the power is there we go, just under the 1 watt there. It should be good enough for jazz out in the field. And we're showing 27.1248, which is as near as makes no difference. As you can see, we're in the middle of a storm here. So it's far too windy uh, to go out testing today. Um, but we'll, um, we'll pop out um, tomorrow, hopefully. And we'll do a little uh, field test with the radio. Uh, albeit we haven't got a great setup here with the antenna but um, we'll see how far we can push it and see if it makes any difference this being AM. Right, um, I haven't got the perfect setup reception wise back at home, back at base um, but we've come about a mile away uh, roughly um, to do the first test um, like I said we're only pushing one watt out of this radio um, so we're not too sure and because it gets, I mean anyone that's tried using AM uh, um, over here in the UK, it's not the best, you get a lot of interference on it. So um, we'll see if we can cut through, we'll give it a go. We've wound the RF game back on the radio a little bit. Um, so we'll make a contact with Tyler and see if he can uh, if he can hear us. Right, as you can hear, we've got a bit of static. There's like power lines and stuff around, but we'll try calling Tyler. All right, and Tyler, I'm at the first location. I wonder if you can hear me okay. Over. I can't hear you very well. All right, I'll try again. Is that any better? I've just changed positions. Can you hear me now? I heard you a bit better, but still not very well. Okay, that's fine. If you want to stop recording at the other... Um, uh, stop recording on the computer and I'll go to an, a different location, okay? I still can't see you very well. Well, I'll just move in, I'm just moving a bit closer towards you. Did you see? I'm going to get the microphone closer to you and the thing it's connected to. No, you're fine. I'm just moving away from these power lines at the minute. Right. How is that now? Can you hear me better now? Yes, much better. Right. How is that now? Can you hear me better now? Yes, much better. Okay, brilliant. I'll, 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 uh, I'll give you my classic over. The quick round box jumps over the lazy dog. How's that? You hear that okay? Yes, I heard that's okay. Okay, that's brilliant. I'll try, I'm going to go cut across town, so I'm going to be about five minutes. I'll go to the usual place that we normally stop, so be about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'll give you another call, okay? Okay, should I stop recording as well? Yeah, if you want to stop recording, that'd be great, yeah. Okay. Right, we'll speak to you in a bit. Well, once I've moved away from the source of all that interference, then it seemed to work pretty decent. So um, I can certainly hear him nice and clear. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to our usual spot across town, and that I think will be a really good test. Although, you know, the uh, UHF radio will do from a what does it easy from there, but as we all know, that's a totally different kettle of fish. So 
Let's go to our normal location that you guys that watch the channel are used to, uh, which is about three miles as the crow flies. And um, I'm not that hopeful it's going to work from there, really, because I think my indoor antenna just isn't up to it. But let's try. Let's go over there and see if we can make a contact. Right, I've come to location A, which you'll be familiar with. Uh, again, not sure if this is going to work from here. Um, probably more of a chance at location B, to be fair. Um, but we will try. Uh, we'll put a call out to Tyler. And what we're doing is uh, we're using PMR radios. Uh, and just to put a call out, because that works fine from here. Use the PMR radios, and then uh, if we can establish contact with these, then we'll try with the CB. All right, let's see if we can raise Tyler on the PMR radio anyway. All right, Tyler, are you uh, monitoring or have you gone down for your lunch? Can you hear me okay? Let's see if he comes back. Okay, mate, I'm going to try with the CB outside and see if you can hear me. Um, don't start recording yet. We'll just do a quick test and if it works, then we'll record it. Okay? Okay. Right, so let's, uh, let's try it first and then you'll see if it works or not. Right, we can hear Tyler but he can't hear me so let's see all right here we go right weird isn't it um similar performance to the FMCB from here okay, I think this is more to do with my uh, base station setup than anything but um we know i mean when it's in range this sounds really nice actually i mean he sounds i mean i think better than on the fm radio on this uh when it's in range uh problem we got though if, if we turn the rf gain up on the cb back at base it just brings in far too much noise and this is the problem you'll find with am sets or eu am sets over here that just uh there's so much noise like from plts and things like that uh and you know cheap charges and all sorts of things so uh, what we'll do, we will go to the second location. I mean, it's just crazy, isn't it? Like the, the little retivis, even on low power, uh, except for PMR, it, it still it's fine. I can even contact him in the car. So there you go. Um, that's progress for you, I suppose. So let's go to location B, as you all know it well, and um, we'll put one final call in for him there. And then I think what we'll do on the next test, I'm going to get a silver rod. Um, I'm going to put that up in the garden and just run an antenna cable in. If you haven't seen his channel, Fred in the Sheds and some brilliant CB videos. So I'll pop a link in the description for Fred in the Sheds channel. And um, he does that. He runs a silver rod on, a, on like a parasol stand in the garden. So I'm going to give that a go because I don't know if I'm... I won't use CB enough to warrant putting a big antenna up on the side of the house. So, um, and I don't want to annoy the neighbours too much. So I'm going to give that a go. Because uh, I think that'll work a lot better than that something in the loft is shielding the antenna and it's not working. Right, let's go to location B and we'll try one more time. And if not, I think we'll wrap this up. Right, the sun's actually come out. We've had a few days of storms here in the UK. It's been a little bit dodge. The sky's looking a tad threatening, but we'll um, we'll see if Tyler can pick us up anyway. Uh, we'll put out another call. I'm not expecting he will because we are a good distance away now seven miles in it uh, but sometimes we do get better performance from here though so i thought it worth a try at least i think we've got the same problem here i can hear him but he can't hear me i'll get tyler to give us another over he is about seven miles in that direction but behind those trees so it's a it's a, it's a good test for one watt off of a amcb that hasn't been tuned but um, I think the receive's okay on this though because uh, I can hear him. So let, we'll, we'll just queue him up on the PMR radio. Alright Tyler, can you hear me okay on this? Uh, uh, have you got me there? Yeah, speak a bit louder into that mate when you're talking. Just give me another over. I can hear you. Okay, great. I'm going to turn away. I'm going to turn away from the wind here. Tyler's going to give us the over. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Right, I think that was pretty good reception, really. Seven miles. Um, so yeah, quite what's going on back at base. I'm not sure. Let's speak back to Tyler anyway. 
Right, well I hope you enjoyed that little delve into a bit of nostalgia. Um, I've got a few of these uh, radios, I've got some of the FM variants as well, uh, which I shall have a little play with. But um, I really, really, as you can probably <laughs> guess, I really, really like these radios. I think they're fantastic. And, um, you know, I think there's a real place for these uh, as collectors. I think, you know, they look great on the shelf. Even if you don't, you know, particularly going to use one of these, I think if you, you know, just as a, as a sort of talking point to have on the shelf, it's a fantastic thing. And, um, you know, it's not the sort of thing I'm going to use day in, day out, but I just, I just love them. They're absolutely fantastic. And um, once I get the uh, antenna situation sorted better at home, then uh, some of these tests will hopefully be a little bit more uh, successful in terms of the reception here. And uh, I've just ordered a silver rod uh, off of eBay, so I'll get that set up on the next video. And then we'll perhaps try this again after I've given it a little tweak. As you can see from the video, it actually performed really well on receive. Um, I don't suppose there's much need, needed doing there. Perhaps we might better squeeze a bit more power out of it. But uh, other than that, I'm really, really happy with it. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. If you have been, thanks ever so much for watching. Catch us on the next one. Take care.